Right, hello. Um, so, there's 1.3 2009 Vauxhall Corsa D. Um, basically, you had intermittent starting. Um, sometimes would crank over, sometimes wouldn't crank over. Had only fault code store was main relay um, code. Done some back pin testing and that on the actual loom itself. Everything was all working. There's getting enough um, voltage up to the ECU. Uh, car started fine, drove out. Two days later, customer goes up to the car, nothing. No, no crank, anything like that. I come round, connected to the diagnostic scanner to the car, um, come up with no communication. Now I could communicate with all the other control modules, like the ABS, the airbag module, all the rest of it could not communicate with the actual ECU, the engine ECU, and just kept saying no communication. Um, now, these uh, ECUs themselves do suffer um, with water ingress, because uh, where they sit, they sit in the scuttle panel, um, obviously the drains in either side of the scuttle panel um, block up, then takes a, a lovely little swim. Now this one wasn't actually sat in any water, but I mean, as you can see, it is corroded, um, somewhat grossy. So I think it says fallen victim to it. Now I have already taken this apart. I'm just going to show you sort of what the issue is um, and why this has gone gone peaked on. Um, so the first thing you've got to do when you, you get the ECU off. I mean, obviously this by no means do not try this if you're not confident. Um, I mean, the way I see it is this ECU is kaput. If it only damages the ECU, ECU more, then it's already knackered, it isn't doing anything. So it's a risk I'm willing to take and the customer's willing to take. Um, so we're just having a look at it, see if it is repairable. Um, yeah, so obviously, like I so you get your ECU off the car. Um, there are some bolts, little screws, um, which I've already taken out. Um, either corner and one up there as well. Uh, loosen them off. Now it won't come apart straight away. It does have sealant running the entire way on the inside cases and up over here. Now this, these edges, this back edge and the two side edges, that did come across, come away quite easily. It was this section here um, which I had trouble with. Um, all I'd done though was heated up this around here, prying it slowly, and slowly but surely it came off. So top cover comes away like that. I mean, as you can see in there, look, the corrosion, the water has gotten inside. That side's all fine, that's what it should look like. But that one side there, look, it's gotten in there. So, yeah, there's that section, it's really hard and stiff to, to get in through there. Obviously, this doesn't look too bad. Um, there are two little screw holes, one there and one there which fix this, the ECU board onto the bottom plate. Um, you can take those off so you can see both sides of the board there. Now, I've seen some of these ECUs and they've been completely rotten. Um, but, got a bit of muckiness at the top there on that earthen strip. I've seen these pins here which corresponds to where these are all soldered in. I've seen them corroded, so they put out. Um, but yeah. So I've obviously looked, looked at this ECU. Um, now, the side, the side that is corroded is that side, which, when it's on there, is that. So it's over this area I first started wanting to start to look. Now, you can't see anything obvious until you get to here. Camera focus. Now, there's a little bit of corrosion there. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get a point now, two seconds. There. Now that is corrosion on the actual board itself. There's um, the trace which goes up. Now, 
I'm not saying that's a definite issue, but that is a fault there along this side where it has been sat and corroded. Now you can see a lot of the water's got in there and it's sort of dried off on the board. You can see water marks. Um, so what I'm going to try and do, sometimes it has been successful for me in the past, is I've um, replaced that trace. I repaired that trace, sorry, um, and cleaned off the rest of the board, double checked everything. Um, just to make sure it is all um, you know, working and, and whatnot. Uh, try it, put it back together, um, and the next video will be me fitting into the car and seeing whether it is actually uh, solved the issue or not. Um, like I say, this this is only really if you're happy with tinkering with something. I mean, it's already damaged. Um, if this is, obviously isn't repairable, you do have two choices then to either... Um, Get another second hand ECU, which is in the reset mode, and getting it coded through um, Vauxhall themselves at extortionate prices. Or, again, another way I've done it is I've removed the EEPROM chip from one ECU and put it into the new good donor ECU. Again, that does carry another risk that if you're not careful, you can damage the you know secondary ECU. Um, or, I suppose the safest method would be to source um, an ECU for the vehicle um, from a donor car along with that car's clocks, key transponder and key, so the immobiliser and the key, um, and the fuse panel as well, the internal fuse box, uh, put it in that way. So basically in essence the car will, you know, there's, everything's all, all, all sort of programmed in. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to get on and repair this now. Um, in the next video, I'll say it'll be me fitting it to the, to the car, seeing if it works. Cheers.